Have you been doing everything you can to avoid getting hospitalized, but now you know that that's a very real possibility? Hi, I'm Dr. Regina, and today we're going to talk about what happens when you have to get admitted to the hospital. First of all, not the end of the world, but we're going to talk about some things that are going to make it very life-changing and hopefully life-lifting for you. So the thought of being admitted to the hospital can be daunting, but let's think about this and put it in perspective. Unfortunately, we do have mental health stigma, and people would not even think twice about going to a hospital if they were told that they just had a heart attack and needed to be admitted for cardiac care. However, if I tell you that, gosh, I'm really concerned about you and you're having these thoughts about ending your life or you're having these thoughts that are really dark or making things very difficult for you. And from a health perspective, being an inpatient is the best thing for you. That can be very difficult. So it is incredibly brave and a very positive step towards your recovery if that's something that needs to happen. Now, remember that the people at the hospital, they're professionals who are trained to assist you during this difficult time. And this video is to help you understand some of the process that might likely happen. Now, of course, it depends on the institution, but this is kind of a, a general idea of what it's like to be hospitalized for psychiatric reasons. Now, I am a board certified psychiatrist, and this information is to help shed light on what to expect, but I may not be your personal psychiatrist. So please remember to talk with your personal provider about these things. The first thing I want you to be thinking about and talking to your provider about is what would happen if I needed to be hospitalized? Because they likely may either have admitting privileges or at the least an informal relationship with facilities in your particular area. Now, there are some great hospitals, some great mental health organizations, some wonderful inpatient facilities, but not every geographic area has that kind of access. Now here in the DC, Maryland, Virginia area, like we are so blessed to have so many wonderful facilities. If I have patients that need to be hospitalized between Shepherd Pratt, Hopkins, and a host of other places, you know, we're, we're good. And we do have that kind of relationship, but I like to talk to my patients about the incident that could happen if they were needed to be admitted to a hospital, the things that they need to be thinking about, right? Again, it's not a punishment. It's meant to keep you safe. Now, the very first thing that is kind of universal is that even if I think a patient needs to be admitted, even if you think you need to be admitted, you're very likely to need to go to the emergency room, especially post-COVID. Oftentimes, you need to go to the emergency room so that they can do COVID testing, make sure you're not positive, make sure that they don't need to quarantine you. If they do, Many hospitals in the emergency room will keep you around five days to make sure that you're going to test negative. Some hospitals want you to be there even longer, and that might affect admission status. The typical thing that they are doing in the emergency room is restarting your own medications, possibly adjusting medicines that you're on already, and there is a likelihood that they're going to do imaging, lab work, and additional assessments right while you're there in the emergency room. Now, from the emergency room, sometimes there are these things called direct admissions where you go in, just get a COVID check, and then you're immediately admitted to the floor and they do all of that work up there. Other places, particularly if it's a, a freestanding mental health institution, you'll go to their particular ER where they do all the work that they want to do for you, and then you'll be admitted to their unit. Still, others will have a combination approach. You'll go to a general emergency room, they'll assess you, they'll triage you, and you may wait while you're getting ready to be admitted elsewhere. Now, why does that happen? Like so many things, we are in the middle of a mental health pandemic. We still are, right? The typical pandemic of COVID has kind of slowed th things down. And, and with COVID and this newish uh, iteration of COVID, people are thinking about that and they've kind of not so much thought about the physical aspects, but I am very much still thinking about the mental health aspects because there are shortages of providers. There are shortages of beds. That was the case before COVID, and it is the case even now. So that may mean that you could be sitting in an emergency room for hours, which is typically what people think about, but you could also be sitting in an emergency room for days while waiting for a bed. I don't want you to be surprised about that, but again, this is why having your conversation with your private provider and then having a conversation with the inpatient staff may be very helpful even before you go to the emergency room and definitely during your time while you're in the emergency room. If this were to happen in the middle of the night, knowing your primary provider and making sure you've got access to the person that's responsible for your medical records is incredibly important. That information can be sent in to the inpatient staff if necessary. 
Now, when you're in the emergency room or when you're getting assessment, wherever it is, please be patient with them. Be patient with yourself because it's very likely that you're going to have to share at least a portion of your story multiple times. I apologize for that in advance, but again, these are people that don't necessarily know. 